this dugout might have been transporting slaves in the days when the Cross River made this market town an important center of trade. But the railroad passes elsewhere and this region is now the kind of West African backwater, just beginning to feel the itch of the modern world. town of Ikopati, eastern Nigeria. Here, a rudimentary clinic attempts to glean the sick and diseased from the busy people of the market. Several mornings a week, the clinic is staffed by a young Canadian volunteer, Dr. Alex McMahon. I suppose a, a long time ago, I considered that uh, I wanted to spend some part of my life, some part of my time as a doctor in a country which was newly developed. And in my pursuit of the same, I ended up in Africa. But I wanted to challenge, challenge my training. Uh, there are lots of limitations in Canada because uh, now we are reaching such a specialized level in medicine that just as a doctor, you're very limited as to what you can do. And I wanted to see just what I could do as a doctor. Mm. Well, Andrew, one thing, x-rays will not help this. If, if they would help you, I would be glad to send you to get an x-ray. The, the condition will not clear with x-rays. I realize that this is causing you much pain because the people look at you and say, he has big nose, and, and they will laugh at you. The only treatment I know that will help this is really treatment that you will... Injections, yes. Medicine you rub on the face to make the skin dry, and special soap to prevent these infections from recurring. I have not any special magic treatment that will take this away. I, at first, I was frustrated because most of the diseases are preventable with uh, good water supply and sanitation. And so I felt, what a waste of time. Here I am doling out drugs to treat diseases which shouldn't be. But I don't feel that anymore. I enjoy it. I enjoy meeting the people. They perhaps help them a little bit, certainly make them more comfortable for a little while longer. And heaven's medicine sometimes can't do much more than that. I suppose at times I get, I get bored because I, I'm not working all the time. But there are times when I'm working so hard I, I, I'm sick. And there are times when I, I'm way over my head. I can't tell if it's... Well, there's a, it's infected for sure, but it may also have c cancer there. But I've never seen cancer. She's got nodes in her neck and both axilla. Um, does she have a cough? She <laughs> can't <coughs> she has a cough. Does she have fever? <laughs> fever and pain all over her body. She hemoglobin is 40%, so she's probably got malaria. She's got ascaris and ankylostomiasis in her stool. And another reason for a low hemoglobin. Ma, you must come into hospital. All right, Ma? She agrees. I think she's come just about five months too late. Five million people in a country smaller than Ontario. 
although in Nigeria only half the children survive to the age of five. But medical care alone is inadequate. Teachers and technicians, as well as doctors and nurses, are needed if the new nations of Africa are to stand on their own. 27-year-old Alex McMahon and his wife Anne, who is a teacher, had been sent to Nigeria by CUSO, the Canadian University's service overseas. CUSO, like the Peace Corps, gives people the chance to set out and help emergent nations in a concrete way. But it isn't all a one-way traffic. A two-year stay in Africa is likely to leave the McMahons questioning some of the comfortable assumptions of their own lives. Why you no go clinic? Why you not? Know <laughs> I don't know what you said. I hate the thing. You need some medicine for that old man. You should. You need medicine, old man. How long has the old man had that? I wonder how long you'll put up with it. Won't kill him for a long time to come. Take off the glasses. The heat can steam up your glasses, but as surgeon and teacher, you've got to keep cool. Test the thread before you ever give it to the surgeon. Someday someone will die because you're giving them a piece of terrible thread. Now the needle's broken. Oh, you boy, you boy. You know what we just did? I don't know. You don't know? I mean, you just went through this whole job and you didn't even know what you're doing? You better know. You've got to be very patient. Things are slow. You mustn't be in a hurry. If you do, you're terribly frustrated, and when you get frustrated, you can't do it properly anyway, so you must be patient. There are lots of days when I give anything to head home. That's for sure. Alex and a young Scottish doctor are responsible for the 60-year-old Mary Slessor Hospital. With only five years practical experience between them, and with no one else to turn to, they're frequently forced to deal with problems neither has encountered before. Problems heightened by poor equipment, lack of funds, and bewildered patients. Another CUSO volunteer, Diane North, is in charge of the women's ward. Recently, Alex performed his first skin graft, a nine-hour operation complicated by poor sterilization. Good chewing stick. Come, boy. How is this wound today? It's okay. Diane, is this dry mm -hmm. under here? Well, you had a piece of skin about like so down there and here, the sutures here. Mm -hmm. Well, it was just necrosing from underneath and the sutures were quite loose, so we took the sutures out and it, it had not healed here and it's just you know, it's actually thick, pussy material underneath and it's going to fall off. Well, this should be part of the abdominal wall, which I brought over. That's a better look at. Can you redress this? Oh, oh, oh heavens. 
Oh, I see what you mean. It was never really healthy looking from the beginning, I'm afraid. I think tomorrow we're going to have to do her in theater. Yeah. That's a, just a bloody mess. She still has her lice. We've given her two treatments and she's still lice. scratching. <laughs> yeah, the girls will be feeding her and one of them will hop across her pillow. But I just don't think we're putting things strong enough on it. So her head scratches amongst her other problems. She likes to have friends with her in bed. Yeah? Okay. The next patient had her nose bitten Zero. off in a fight. What a difference from the day she came in with her nose in her hand. I had the girls go into the nostril yesterday just to try and loosen up some of that hardness. It hasn't been a very long time since we sewed that on, and if it takes, it's a miracle, but just don't touch it. We're about to tell her, tell her we want to make sure that this patch will not fall off. I'm really just worried, but I want to be able to see her. If she goes out and it falls off, it'll be, she'll get it in there. <laughs> But he's had no more spasms. No. Come and sit up, Daniel. Just a minute, just a Why is he so stiff today? He wasn't stiff yesterday. Do you have... No. I'll get it done. Ubiya? Abiya fi. Abiya fi kama. Abiya fi? Hmm? Ete abiya fi. Yes. Yes. He didn't have a VIP before. Is he only on uh, tetanus and penicillin? So at this point, I'm going to have to do a spinal puncture on him. Mm -hmm. He never had his neck stiffness like this before. I thought of meningitis when he first came in, but he, he, he didn't have any neck stiffness. He was pliable, and everybody thought no. tetanus. Before you go to the clinic? No. Yeah. So after this. I have to do it when I come back. I just can't. Still in Okay, that's all I know. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Just this week, I had an interesting break, which provided an excitement and quiet old E2. I was invited to have luncheon with Premier Dr. Agpara and his touring political entourage. <laughs> election time is very close here in Nigeria, and the usual ballyhoo of electioneering is just as active as in Canada, but it certainly has a West African flavor. Appeared, a jovial, well nourished man, dressed in traditional costume. All the materials were printed with his picture and name, bearing a massive black feather fan, which he re waved graciously at the crowd as he walked to the upstairs dining room where the luncheon was held. <laughs> The lunch was complete confusion for actual conversation was impossible. Only the occasional shouts could be heard. But for me, there was a special interest and I had my first edible Nigerian food. It's really hot. 
I've never eaten foo foo before. <laughs> You come over here so ignorant, you know, yeah. We all are so ignorant. I come over here and I, before I drink any water, I would wonder, is it boiled, is it filtered? Before I eat any food, has it got unboiled water in it? When I'd look at any vegetables, is it covered with E. coli? And, oh, drive you nuts. You just, um, because you're so suspicious of everything and it takes a while to get used to it when you find that the food really is food and it doesn't make much difference. How, how do you tell a fresh one? Yeah. 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 This one even died. Should be hard. No, no, no. It, it goes wrong no. enough. Yeah. I don't know. This one fresh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You have to buy something. Yes, we want to try this. Oh. Yes. The kitchen, a holy terror, is out at the back and full of smoke. Thank heavens for the two boys. The few nights I have tried to cope with dinner have ended in tears. It's difficult to keep up the most minimal standard in the home when the meat is unrecognizable and you have to cook it to death. The only vegetables we've seen are pumpkin and acali beans, and things in tins are outrageously expensive. We disguise everything with curry, and it's not too bad if you don't think about it. Every afternoon at four, the babies from the E2 leper colony are washed within earshot of the McMahon kitchen. Kept separate from their diseased parents, these children are better cared for than most. They will probably grow up to be part of a healthy, well-educated minority and perhaps even become members of the establishment. Plantain and yam cake. Oh, that is good. That's good Nigerian food. Hard to believe that this food can come out of that smoky kitchen. <laughs> a charming American teacher over for supper calls for a little formality and the chance to talk shop. And if you talk about the situation before they're supposed to write about it, not exactly tell them what they're going to write. More Carol Williams is a Peace Corps girl from Arkansas. That's what I did, and, and I got some pretty good ones for mm. the final. They write such spicy essays, I find. They're so frank! <laughs> Remember that one? Don't you? Oh. You know, they're more yeah. bush than ants. They must. I know. You know, they pick out the strangest things about you. They said, Miss Williams has a long nose. And you know, I never thought that my nose was particularly <laughs> long at home, but out here, I guess. Uh, you know, well, sure, it's it is pretty. You know, it is long. But, uh, you know, you know, they, I've had patients admit to me that their nose is very squat and fat, like not like doctors' pointing nose. My nose mm -hmm. is really pointing. Oh, all right, then. Yeah, no, no. Yes, no, I'm not given by nose. Oh, I see. Yeah. More trouble? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, dear doctor. Sorry to disturb you, but a woman has just come in with strong abdominal pain. Would doctor please come? Things do not look well. Mabua sent it, eh? Oh, ho. 
Where is my bag? Go get my bag. I want to go home. <laughs> so we go up to the hospital now and take you in the truck. Yes. You come and come? Yes. You got your ladder? Yes. Okay, come. Yes. I'm afraid I, I have not allowed myself to relax enough. I, when I'm called in the middle of the night and I'm not sure what it is, I, I usually have a differential diagnosis of about 10 diseases, all of which are terribly serious and going to require things I've never done before. And I keep thinking this all the way up to the hospital and then when I see the patient and I've made up my mind, uh, then I can relax. I guess it's my own fear. I, I, I worry a lot. I know it's, I, I can make, they make the diagnosis is not the problem. I find this is a challenge. But I'm always worried because I'm so limited into what I can do here. I, I'm always comparing with what I would do at home and what could be done. And then I have to uh, compromise, always compromise. And this is, um, this is frustrating because you don't get the results you want. We cannot. We can manage this. But what? There's no other nurse. So this is haywire. With the generators started for lights, screens have to be put on the windows to keep out the bugs. Nothing can be done about the heat and humidity, so you try to forget them. It's past midnight before preparations are well underway. This patient is dangerously sick with a strangulated hernia, so the orderly is trying to locate the other doctor. I, I think. The thing that worries me most about hernias, of course, is they're strangulated hernias where you've got bowel that may be no longer be viable, in which case you'll have to resect a portion of the bowel. And the thing that frightens me the most is my own fear that I'm going to have to do a bowel resection one of these times, and I know I will. Um, and I've never done it, and it's, it's major. And um, I've never, well, I've only seen about two done, and that was two years ago, so I... But once I do the first one, I'll be all right. The first one will scare me. I'm certain it will. All day, she's got nothing down. But she still has bowel sounds. There's no staff nurse, Robin. It is almost dawn when the danger of complications is past. They can relax now, but in a few hours they start work again. You coming back? Yeah. She's very good, isn't she? The spinal works a trick sometimes. What's the time now? Do you know? It's late anyway. <laughs> well, that's it. Ma! Hey, Ma. No. No, no. That's a good girl. I, I kept thinking I'm, I'm going to have a challenge that I can't face and, and I'll have to back down. There just hasn't been a chance yet. I, you have no choice. You don't back down. Once you start, you're on. You've got to go. Um, I get angry when I, when I can't 
do everything I wanted to do for people. I, I, I sort of thought I'd be over here working for nothing. And everyone would come and, I, and there would be no fees and sort of a utopia in medicine. But there are fees and there are people who can't afford to pay the fees. And, and it, this bothers me a lot. But I have to accept it because the, this is the way the hospital is run and without it being done this way, the hospital would close. The hospital is performing a great service and it can't function any other way. Dear Bev, Lee and Gay, your weekly letters continue to arrive and brighten up our life in E2. It is very difficult for us to believe that it is Christmas with snow, evergreens, and all the North American trimmings. For everything is the same here, perhaps a little cooler now, the air foggy with sandy winds of the Harmattan. Anne and I are happy here. It has been a wise decision. It is no paradise, but it fulfills my dream of so many years. There's enough time to think, and we have developed now an understanding of each other, which is very deep. So the work has begun. <laughs> 